or at least know where your grains are coming from. I mean, this is why the whole foods diet works so well, getting away from all these processed foods because you get away from a lot of this. This flour is gluten free. Does that mean anybody can eat it and have no health consequences other than maybe spiking your blood sugar? Let's talk about it. Um, I was also talking to my uncle recently. He used to be a pig farmer and he was talking, we were talking about my book and moldy grains especially because he has experience with this and he was telling me that when he would feed his pigs moldy grains they would go into estrus at weird times they would have all kinds of strange issue health problems so what they did was they would put bentonite clay i guess this is pretty common they would put clay in with the feed and that would bind up enough of the mold and the animals wouldn't have these health problems doesn't mean they weren't getting exposed to any mold it just means they would kind of eliminate some of the problems let's talk about this start with a 2008 paper in the journal of pediatrics called high growth rate of girls with precocious puberty exposed to estrogenic mycotoxins. Remember, we've talked about early puberty before, how many people are going into puberty ridiculously early, and how the doctors are trying to redefine the normal age range for that, trying to get, make the problem go away by making a new definition. All right, now we're talking about high growth rates. So they analyzed serum mycoestrogen. That's estrogen secreted by molds found in grains. We're going to talk about that. And they looked at 30 girls with early puberty, 30 girls that were healthy, and they found high levels of mold estrogen in the girls with early puberty. What else did they find, though? More interestingly, they found the girls were bigger, they were fatter, they had more weight, and they talk about that. They say because of its chemical resemblance, this mold estrogen has a chemical resemblance to anabolic agents used in animal breeding. And there's other papers that say the same thing. They talk about how Farmers used to use this specifically to fatten cows. Maybe they still do, uh, but they actually would inject it and use it as a drug, mold estrogen. It makes, it makes the animals fatter. It makes the girls fatter too. You don't want to be exposed to this stuff. Let's talk about some of the other problems. I had a, literally a big stack of papers today with all the different problems from the mold estrogen that you find in grains, but... I, I came across this review from 2007 in the Food and Chemical Toxicology Journal, and this one actually has basically all the information combined. I love it. It's called a review on the toxicity, occurrence, metabolism, detoxification, regulations, and intake of xerolenone in estrogenic mycotoxin. When people talk about mycotoxins, mold toxins, xerolenone, put that one at the top of the list. Put it up high at least because it's an estrogen, it acts like estrogen in your body but it's artificial. It, it, it causes problems with that delicate hormone balance I'm always talking about. So a long title because they're covering everything. Let's get started. ZEA has been shown to be hepatotoxic, hematoxic, immunotoxic, and genotoxic. In my book, I say, look, you don't have to be a scientist to recognize that's a lot of toxic. <laughs> okay. Now they say recent data about the worldwide contamination of foods by ZEA, that's xerolenone, is considered in this review, and they set out a provisional maximum daily tolerable intake of 500 nanograms per kilogram of grain weight. Now, it's, what's interesting is in the U.S., we, have no, we don't have a, a limit right now for mold estrogen. It's insane, because the U.K. has a limit, and the European Union has an even tighter limit. And what's interesting is when, the, when they have a lot of moldy grains over there, Guess what they do? They ship them over here. In fact, what's really crazy is Europe has a limit on mold estrogen in their cattle feeds. So if the cattle feed doesn't make the cut, ship it over here. It's insane. And I'll show you them. I mean, they got the data in this paper. You want to look it up? Check out this paper. All right. First, let's talk about it. Fungi producing ZEA. Remember, molds are in the fungi family. It goes fungi, and then there's different classes. Fungi producing ZEA contaminate corn. Okay, corn, watch out for that. Barley, okay, watch out for that. Oats, okay. Wheat, sorghum, millet, and rice. In other words, pretty much anything that's grain, especially if they're stored in huge facilities. They say it's also detected in cereal products like flour, malt, soybeans, and beer. All right, no surprise. So the soybeans we've been talking about have a lot of problems, right? We've talked about phytoestrogens, 
We could have talked about anti-nutrients and chemicals are spraying. Now we can talk about mold in soybeans. But I mean, a lot of grains, right? Mass production, these are some of the problems. Here's, here's where it's coming from, all right? I actually almost went out to the field and just picked a head of corn because a lot of times you see the corn with these big mold or fun, fungus heads on top of the corn. And that's one of the sources. They say, numerous experiments tend to indicate that the high levels of ZEA, xerolenone, reported to occur naturally in some samples of corn-based animal feeds. All right, they occur naturally, but they, res they usually result from improper storage rather than development in the field. That's important to know. In other words, the bigger our storage facilities are and the wetter they are, which happens often, you get mold contamination in the whole thing. And it's expensive. And then they say, on the other hand, there is now overwhelming evidence of global contamination of cereal and animals with mycotoxins, especially ZEA. And look at this. They've got charts. Every single country they're looking at, all the contaminations. I mean, it's mind-boggling. And they even use a word that you don't often hear in science. Phenomenally high concentrations of ZEA have been reported in food samples from the USA. Shouldn't surprise you, there's no maximum limit. What do they mean by phenomenally high? Well, remember, they're setting out, a, they, they suggest a, to, a maximum daily limit of 500 nanograms per kilogram, 500. What do they find in the US? Sometimes they find 2 billion 900 million nanograms per kilogram of the feed, of the grain. 2 billion, almost 3 billion, really. So that's what happens when you don't regulate this stuff and you have mass production of grains and again you know we talked about the bias the spin the corporate influence this is what happens when you've got huge companies huge industry influencing the government in america people want to make money they don't want to throw that moldy grain away they want to use it not only for humans but also for animals which neither of which are allowed in the in the european union moving on it is acknowledged that zea is of relatively low acute toxicity i wanted to point that out because what that means is that if you eat some, you don't feel that Im immediately. You don't get a headache. You don't get a, bloat, a bloated feeling. You don't get acute problems, instant problems. Why? Because it acts like estrogen in your body. Estrogen is natural. Remember, we're imitating a natural hormone. We're just throwing it off a little bit. So that's part of the problem here is the symptoms, the problems take years to develop. So you don't see them in most scientific experiments and they're serious problems. Let's talk about the serious problems. Recent studies have demonstrated the potential for ZEA to stimulate growth of human breast cancer cells containing estrogen response receptors. All right, that shouldn't surprise us, breast cancer. More, more of that, more of the same. We've seen it with soy, we're seeing it with other artificial estrogens. They also talk, they have this huge list, laundry list of health problems. They talk about depression of testosterone, lowering testosterone. We talked about that. They talk about feminization. Talked about that. Uh, suppression of libido, infertility, reduced milk production. You're having trouble breastfeeding your baby. Get rid of the grains. Um, I mean, just a lot of problems. Immunotoxicity, like I mentioned at the very beginning. I mean, it alters your immune system. And we've done a video on that even already. Gosh. So how do you how do you get rid of ZEA? Well, avoid grains. I mean, that's something or at least know where your grains are coming from. I mean, this is why the whole foods diet works so well, getting away from all these processed foods because you get away from a lot of this without even having to think about, oh, can I do this granola brand or this granola brand or whatever? No, you just push that aside and say, I'm gonna eat whole foods. But one way that actually eliminates ZEA, they talk about is activated charcoal, activated carbon, binds 100% of ZEA in this experiment that they, they reference. In other words, if you were exposed to some of this toxin, uh, you take an activated charcoal pill and it'll bind, it'll grab it and you're, you'll pass it. You'll pass it out without being impacted by it. So, I mean, a bigger problem I think is that our a lot of our foods today are so dosed, so heavily dosed with preservatives, the molds don't even wanna eat them. But when the molds do want them, the molds are there in America, watch out. It's ruining your health.